tonight. It's the night before Apple's big event, and we have more last-minute goodies to share. Plus, Uber claims to have added 50,000 new jobs per month, and shopping via tweeting is rolling out. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 167 for Monday, September 8th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. That's personalcapital.com slash TN and the number two. Oh, hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. Now, the company may get headlines for competitive mudslinging with rival car ride service Lyft and also the taxi industry. But on stage at the TechCrunch Disrupt conference in San Francisco today, Uber CEO Travis Kalanick claims the company is creating 50,000 jobs per month as it continues to grow globally. Now, the company's last round valued it at $17 billion. It also has a new API that will let developers earn free rides by adding request and Uber buttons and referring customers. And the company's experimenting with a courier service called Uber Rush, as well as Uber Fresh meal deliveries. Apple's latest event starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific. Perhaps you've heard of this. And the rumors are going to fly in until the 11th hour. The latest, one of them anyway, Apple customers that are interested in the larger 5.5-inch version of the iPhone 6, which is rumored to be unveiled tomorrow, may be able to snag one on September 19th, along with the 4.7-inch version. Now, quantities could be limited at launch, but previously it was thought that the larger phablet-sized iPhone wouldn't even be available until later this year. The rumor comes from iGen.fr, which has accurately revealed product release dates in the past, but it's still very much a rumor. Alleged hardware leaks show that the new iPhones may also have slightly tapered glass edges, round corners, larger volume buttons, a newly placed lock button, and even a redesigned camera. Again, allegedly. Bankinnovation.net is reporting that Apple will be utilizing both near-field communication, or NFC, and tokenization technology in the new iPhone 6 and iWatch as part of its payments initiative. Now, this is citing anonymous sources. Bank Innovation also notes that Apple has patents dating back to 2009 related to the tokenization process. Financial institutions also prefer token technology because it replaces those 16-digit card numbers on the front of credit and debit cards with codes that are easily transmittable over the air and between vices, but only used once. Apple could potentially use tokenization technology for the sorts of things beyond just paying at a cash reg register like transit or access to a building or even a hotel key. Now, hold on a second. Isn't Apple in a data privacy crisis, you might be asking yourself? Well, last week, Apple CEO Tim Cook said that the company would be beefing up iCloud security measures in response to the recent disclosure of compromised celebrity accounts. And the company has begun sending out e email alerts when iCloud accounts are accessed via web browsers. The alerts are being sent out even if the specific browser was already used previously to access iCloud. Password change and login alerts had previously only been sent when the event took place on an unknown Apple device. Amazon announced today that it's dropping the Fire Phone's price in the U.S. to 99 cents. That's at least with a two-year contract. One year of Amazon Prime is still included in that package. Now, the Fire launched at $199 just two months ago, so quite the price drop. The company also announced that the Fire Phone is coming to Germany and to the U.K. The device is now available for pre-order and will start shipping on September 30th. Facebook hit a big milestone today. The company's market value surpassed $200 billion, which puts it at number 22 in standings of world's biggest corporations. As membership growth in the U.S. slows, Facebook is looking to emerging markets to add new users, particularly those who access the service via mobile device. North American users increased 7% to 152 million in June from a year earlier. Asian users increased 26% to 228 million. This is according to a company filing with the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission earlier this summer. Facebook also said that it has 100 million monthly active users in Africa, and more than 80% of those are on mobile phones. 
Coming up, if your regular TiVo box just isn't enough, how about a turbo version that'll record actual years of TV shows? And up next, Donna Tam from CNET is going to join us to explain Twitter's new buy button. What are we buying exactly? But first, we want to share with you a free and secure tool called Personal Capital that solves big barriers to growing your wealth. There's two of them. First one, it can be hard to keep track of your money. Maybe you want to dabble in stocks. You have a 401k. You've got a couple different bank accounts, and you want to make sure that you're maximizing all of that. You've got different sites. There's usernames. There's passwords. There's all sorts of stuff to contend with. The second, well, maybe you pay somebody to manage your money for you, but that can be expensive too. Personal Capital does all of these things, brings all of your accounts and assets onto a single screen. That's accessed from your computer, your phone, your tablet, kind of wherever, with real-time graphs that are intuitive. Personal Capital has a award-winning watch app you can download in Google Play right now that integrates with Personal Capital on other Android devices. If you're an Android user, provides users with timely updates on their finances when they're on the go. Personal Capital shows how much you're overpaying in fees as well. Not just that, but how to reduce those fees. Shouldn't be paying them. You also get advice on optimizing your investment depending on who you are and how the advice should be tailored to you. Signing up takes just a minute and it'll pay back big dividends. Personal Capital gives you clarity and transparency and you can make better investment decisions right away. You can set up a free account right now by going to personalcapital.com slash TN2. It's free and it's a smart way to grow your money. Thanks to Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us now is Donna Tam, staff writer over at CNET. Hello, Donna, and happy hey. iPhone event eve to you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of iPhone or iOS, really mobile apps in general, uh, you had an article today that we can shop in 140 characters because Twitter is testing an ability to buy products in tweets. Leo and I actually talked about this earlier today on, on iPad Today, and you know the two of us both said, well, y you have to use the official Twitter app, obviously, to, to, to make sure that you're even going to get these, I guess it's, it's a new version of a Twitter card, but how is this, who's this designed for? How's it going to work? Well, it's, um, so basically what you do is it's, it's made to be very, very simple. You have like a buy button, a user will tap on it, they'll enter their credit card information and their shipping information. And then Twitter will hand that information off to whatever merchant that you decide to buy that product from. Um, they're just testing it. So really it's hard to say like how engaged their users will be with this. Um, because it is a very new way to shop for people. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people, unless there's a link to a, you know an, an Amazon page or something like that, really mm -hmm. equate Twitter with the place to buy things. But certainly, if you're a brand, I could see where this would be extremely helpful and 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 cut down on on a few clicks if you're trying to make a sale. If they're if the company is just testing it though, when do we expect a rollout? Are they trying to figure out if anyone's interested? Who gets to test it? Yeah, I think you like hit the nail on the head. Like it's. It's really hard to say when they're going to roll it out or if they will even roll out largely. Although with this kind of investment, I'm going to guess that they will at some point. Um, who gets to test it is, uh, is unknown to me. I mean, they're, they're sort of rolling it out with a small group of U.S. users right now. And they plan on expanding this to, to more U.S. users in the future. Now, Twitter obviously has advertising as, as their primary revenue stream. And depending on who you talk to, they're doing well at it or they have a really long way to go. How are they going to make money from a buy button? I assume there's some sort of revenue split or per click type of a deal. You have any insight on that? Um, they haven't made that clear, but if they are taking it from an advertising model, I can see them having like a revenue split or even act like a almost like an affiliate link. You know, when you a lot of people, a lot of blogs will post links to different sites and they'll get a cut of those sales. So I can I can imagine them doing something like that. Twitter is is sometimes docked, uh, especially by people who are, you know, considered the Twitter old guard by being too friendly to brands. You know, as the company grows and they need new users, they're looking more towards monetization than, you know, keeping keeping the, the users that made them popular in the first place happy. Do you think that this is something that's going to be really annoying for those people? Or is it something like, well, if you're me and you're using TweetBot, you're not even going to see this anyway? Um, I think... I think for most consumers, uh, this is so new that it's 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 not going to be something a lot of us will be comfortable with to begin with. I just can't see that being like an easy adoption thing because it's such a different way to to get a product. Like you said, there's not like a 
Um, there won't be like a super detailed product page, I assume, because of the, the amount of real estate that there is. You know, it's like it's hard to be able to decide how to buy something like that. That said, I think people are thinking of the way to shop as, as something that's changing very quickly, especially on mobile. What are some other examples of a social media site that that has the visibility as a as a as a as a site like Twitter that has shopping services? I guess Pinterest would probably be uh, the the first place that I would think of. But is anybody else doing this, or is this kind of Twitter trailblazing the way here? Well, Facebook actually has um, a buy buttons embedded in their advertising, so they they do it in a different way, which is they sell it as an ad. And then they allow their, their merchants there to, or the, whoever's buying the ads, put in a buy button for their products. Uh, Pinterest does a little bit of that where they link to other sites. Um, but there's also a lot of sites like Polybor, which is, a, which is technically a social media site. It's more like a creation site where they also will link out to, um, to retailers and brands. And they've been very successful at that. Uh, Amazon actually uses Twitter uh, in terms of like having an initiative that does like hashtags. And so Amazon on Amazon, you can... Um, on Amazon's feed, you can reply to a tweet with hashtag Amazon cart and put it in your cart. So there's different ways that companies and brands are experimenting with this. Well, brave new world for Twitter, obviously, uh, you know, trying new things. And uh, we'll we'll see. And in a few months, we'll see if, uh, if, if we're all really sick of these buy buttons or if they <laughs> actually end up being really helpful. Thanks so much, Donna Tams, a staff writer over at CNET. Thanks for being with us, Donna, and tell people how they can keep up with your work. Uh, you can just go to cnet.com slash news and uh, follow me there. Yep. All right, Seth. Thank you so much. Hey. All right, finally, we mentioned big old TiVo. Oh, this is good. If you have a spare $5,000 laid around, and I mean, who doesn't, right? The new TiVo Mega, which is a great name, it's a server-sized TiVo that has 24 terabytes of storage in a RAID 5 arrangement with hot swappable drives, which gives you enough space to store... 26,000 hours of standard deaf footage. Now, TiVo says that's three years of TV, but let's be honest. It's all about HD now. That works out to still 4,000 hours, which is about five months. <laughs> the TiVo Mega also features six tuners for recording, which should at least prevent that dreaded live TV conflict and trying to save other programs for later. You TiVo people know what I'm talking about. So $5,000, I mean, that's Quite a buy, right? And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News today. Tomorrow, it's an hour early, 9 a.m. Pacific, uh, 12 p.m. Eastern. And we will be covering the Apple event starting at 10 a.m. Pacific, live here on Twit. I will be there. Hope you join us. Until tomorrow, I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.